Hi everyone, and today we're going to talk about image formats, quality and size, and why does any of this matter? Image format and image quality. What are they and what is the difference? And more importantly, why should you care? Okay, so let's start with the difference. Image format is how the image is packaged up so that you can use it in different software, websites, etc. There are quite a few different formats for different things, and we'll cover those in a bit. Image quality is how well the image is preserved, or not as the case may be, when you use one of the image formats. Some are lossless, no degradation to the original, and some compress everything as much as they can so that you can send via email or use on websites. But this comes at a cost. If you go to the extremes, you will notice that your images don't look as good as they should. Now we have that out of the way, let's talk about each one and its pros and cons. So, we have two types of image formats, raster and vector. Raster is a collection of pixels which make up the image. Vector is a file of maths, and people like designers and architects etc. will use this file format for designing things, because as well as a few other benefits, when something is scaled using maths, no quality is lost. Now, as a photographer, I'm going to discuss the following formats that relate to the raster principle, because this is how pictures are taken. Okay, so what file formats are the most common for your images? JPEG is probably the most common file format and the most widely accepted, but it is a lossy format and as such, as a photographer, I would recommend that this file format you use once you have finished editing your picture and it's ready for uploading and distribution. With this format, you have the option to compress the image as much as you want. And personally, I found a sweet spot with Lightroom of exporting at 76% without noticing any change in the final image. Well, I'm sure there is, but not to my eye anyway. GIF is an old format, but it's still actually used today. For photographers, the problem with GIF is that it will only display 256 colors. So it's really not suitable for your beautifully colour rich photographs. But there is one advantage to a GIF, and that is that you can have several frames in it, and basically create a little animation. And because it's only storing 256 colours, the file size is low, so it can be embedded in emails and websites for your viewers to enjoy. So yes, it still does have a place in this modern world. PNG files will allow you to save your files in a lossless or lossy format, but the main reason for using PNG is the fact that you can have a transparent element to your image. It's great file format for graphic designers as it allows them to build things with transparent sections for websites or brochures. Now, as for a photographer, I wouldn't recommend using this format unless you are cutting out the background to make it have a transparent section, for instance. TIFF files are great for photographers as they are lossless and they will also remember all of the data if you converted your file from RAW. So you can bring the shadows and the highlights and all that detail back from the original image that your camera took. It also allows you to create layers in your image so that you can edit different sections on different layers and come back later to manipulate them again and again. Professional photo editing software packages make use of TIFF as standard. This is a file format that you would use as a master and then export to JPEG and PNG for the version you use on websites and emails, etc. The file size limit of a TIFF is around 4 gigabytes, which is pretty large, but I have done projects which have exceeded this and I've had to change the file format or reduce the size by combining layers. This format is proprietary Photoshop format. 
PSD is the standard one, which is very similar to TIFF, but not quite as compatible with other software. The PSB version allows you to save files bigger than 4GB, and Photoshop will automatically ask you to convert to this if you hit the file size limit on your current project. As I use Adobe software, I personally use PSD file format for most of my images. If I'm editing them in a little bit more detail than is available in Lightroom, or creating a flyer or a poster, etc. This file format is the one that comes out of your camera if you have the option set and will usually come with a smaller JPEG as well to help your software display the image or for several other reasons, which I'm not going to go into here. The one thing about RAW is that it captures everything your camera can see. This is actually more than your eye can see which means you have the extra detail to play with and manipulate. The other thing is that the image will be flat rather than as you see it in all of its glory so that it can capture all the extra detail and gives you all those extra shadows and, layers and highlights. Raw files are meant to be processed before you show off your image. A raw file is not editable. You will need to load your raw file into an editing software and then save it to another file for that. PSD, TIFF, JPEG, PNG, etc. With only PSD and TIFF keeping all that extra information that is in the raw file in the first place for you to manipulate again and again. Now, there are other formats, but as photographers, these are the main ones you need to know about. Image quality should be decided for your output files only. That's the ones that you will upload to websites, send in emails, upload to Instagram, etc. For your master, you should always use a lossless file format like TIFF or PSD. So why does this matter? Well, if you save an image as a JPEG and then go and edit it and save it again, you're effectively compressing an already compressed file, which will lower the quality. And if you do this several times, you will eventually have a picture which looks hardly like the original. There are plenty of videos on YouTube where people have done this to prove a point. So I won't waste my time here repeating them now. Go and check them out for yourself. Now, if you save an image as a JPEG and then put it into a watermark program, because as photographers, we like our watermarks, then you will probably be all right and not notice any difference. The point is not to use it as the master file here. Why alter the image quality? Well, it actually reduces the file size, which can be really important when uploading to websites, email, etc. As a web page, which is slow to load, will put off your prospective viewer, and they might just give up and go somewhere else. So when saving a JPEG for the end result, I quite often save at 76%. Unless I'm going to be adding the watermark, etc., then I save at 100% and compress it down to 76 on the watermark software. So where did I come up with the 76%. Trial and error. Well, okay, a couple of hours of saving at nearly every percentage to see what the difference was. And this one seems to be the one which I couldn't see any difference. Try it for yourself and see what you think. Whatever your original file image size is, that's the dimensions of the horizontal and vertical, i.e. 1024, 768, 8000 by 6000, I would recommend that only reduce it on the final output version that you do, i.e. JPEG, etc. Keep your original master in the largest size possible. Otherwise, when you come to print, you might find there's not enough detail for your image to look its best. So, why reduce the file size at all? Well, first off is the fact that reducing the file size will help with loading and transmission. Secondly, if you have an image of 8,000 by 6,000 pixels, but the viewer's screen is only 1,400 by 1,000, then the image is going to be too big for the page, and people are either going to have to scroll left and right, up and down, to see the whole image, or the web software is going to reduce the file to a size which fits, and that software will not be as sophisticated as your editing software and will most likely reduce the quality of the image the viewer gets to see. It will also take up more space on the website and you normally get charged for space or have a limit. So what size should you use? Well, there is no real set figure here, 
but there are personal recommendations and guidelines from various platforms like Instagram, etc. But they will downscale those images for you if needed as well. And they're not too bad, but I like to be in control. Now, personal recommendations or suggested sizes on here. Please note that a raster file, unlike a vector, cannot be upscaled, made larger, without losing quality as the information is not physically there and the computer has to guess. And to be fair, there are some amazing packages out there which do a great job. So all of this should at least help you in making the decision on the optimum file type, compression setting, and final output size to use. I hope you've found this useful. If you have, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up down below or subscribe to the channel and help out. It'd be really appreciated. Look forward to seeing you again. Good.